of this body. It's my belief that this will move very quickly as we can see from the agreement that we've got a short agreed time agreement, one amendment, one amendment that I think is extremely important for all members of the Senate to consider. But I rise in support of uh, S 1963, the Caregiver and Veterans Omnibus Health Care Act of 2009. This is actually the combination of two bills reported out of the Veterans Affairs Committee this year, and it did enjoy bipartisan support. The centerpiece of the legislation is the support it would provide to caregivers of severely injured veterans of current wars. The bill would provide counseling, support, living stipends, and health care for those caregivers. As my colleagues know, family caregivers play an extremely important and I might say a unique role in helping to meet the severely injured veterans' personal care needs. For some veterans' families, uh, members serve as their primary caregiver, some of whom have lost their jobs, but more importantly, have lost their health care as a result of that commitment to that family member. As the chairman uh, spoke about a service member he had remembered in this, and Ted Wade's a North Carolinian. He made the same impression with me, Mr. Chairman. I also think about caregivers Edgar and Denise Edmondson from North Carolina as well. The parents of Eric Edmondson, a severely injured veteran from Operation Iraqi Freedom. They've been caring for Eric since the day they took him out of a VA hospital. Out of a VA hospital because the VA had basically come to the point that they said, we can't improve Eric's life. Now, after Eric was injured on patrol along the Iraqi-Syrian border, he went into cardiac arrest while he was awaiting transport to Germany. It was, in fact, that cardiac arrest, that traumatic brain injury that put Eric in a situation where he couldn't walk and he couldn't talk. And as he laid in that long-term care provided by the Veterans Administration, he got no better. Couldn't walk and he couldn't talk and Eric's father stepped up to the plate and immediately began researching all the options for Eric's treatment. Despite being told that his son would not emerge from his vegetative state, Ed Edmonston pushed on. He sold his business, he cashed in his savings, and retired pay, all in an effort to provide Eric 24 hour under his father's constant attention and relentless, relentless pursuit of new options, Eric received the treatment he needed. Without his dad's commitment, without the commitment of the rest of Eric's family, who basically dropped everything else important in life to focus on his needs, Eric wouldn't be doing as well today as he is. And I might say, he walks and he talks. And he continues to make progress every day because his most important caregiver, his parents, believed in him. And they believed in what they could accomplish. But let me tell you the rest of the story. Denise, Eric's mom, recently suffered a compound fracture of her ankle while caring for Eric's daughter, Gracie. Because Denise and Ed have no health insurance, they're on the hook for $36,000 worth of medical bills. Now, had Eric chosen Denise, his mother, as his caregiver, and this legislation was in effect, we would have provided coverage for Denise to have health care coverage. I believe that's what this legislation is about. Recognizing the individuals that make life-altering commitments to members of their family or service members that without that commitment might not have the quality of life that they've got. As I mentioned, assistance to caregivers is just one part of this bill, though. 
Other provisions would remove barriers to emergency care provided to veterans at non-VA facilities. It would expand health care services for women veterans, provide additional outreach to veterans in rural communities, provide additional improvements in mental health care services provided to veterans, enhance services to homeless veterans, improve the ability of VA to recruit and retain the needed health care professionals, authorize major medical facility construction projects, test a concept I introduced of providing veterans and their survivors with dental coverage, and much more. Mr. President, this is a good bill. It's not perfect. It can be better. And I would urge my Senate colleagues to strongly consider supporting Senator Coburn's amendment. And let me explain why. When the committee passed this bill, we didn't limit it to current vets of current wars. We extended it to all veterans. Since it came out of committee in a bipartisan way, we have narrowed it down not to include all veterans. Senator Coburn's amendment expands it to all veterans. When the committee considered the caregiver bill, we considered it because we wanted to keep veterans out of nursing homes. That was the goal, to give them an alternative because the traditional role of the nursing long-term care facilities had not worked with improving the quality of care and the quality of life for these veterans. And that was our goal. Senator Coburn brings some definition to who's eligible for this based upon the fact that they would be headed towards a nursing home. We, we may tinker a little bit with the definition as to whether it's exclusive or totally as inclusive as we would like, but make no mistake, it's not different from the intent of the committee as to why the committee passed the Caregiver Act. So with that, oh, by the way, let me mention one probably even more important piece of Senator Coburn's amendment. It actually pays for what we're doing. Uh, we say the Secretary shall, that means he has to, implement everything in the caregiver bill. Senator Coburn's amendment is going to say is, you know what, we're going to take some money out of the UN that we pay to the UN, and we're going to fund our veterans. I, for one, am tired of coming to the floor and spending money we don't have. Well, why don't we take some of the money we've already appropriated and let's shift it. This is, a, this is something novel for the United States Senate, but it is called prioritizing. Let's prioritize where the federal investment should go. Let's make sure that we pass the Caregiver and Health Care Act. Let's make sure that we pay for it with the Coburn Amendment. And let's pull that money of already appropriated funds so that we can not only look at our veterans, but we can look at our children and tell them this is a good bill. Mr. President, I yield the floor.